Hello world, we are back and we are going to today talk about the fusion reactor. As always, if this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. So first things first, we're making the fusion reactor and we're going to need a brand new component. And this component is going to be this plutonium or polonium pellet. Now the polonium pellet is going to be using some machines that we have covered before, but this is essentially how it works. First, we are going to need some nuclear waste, as you can see inside of this barrel here. Nuclear waste you get from the fission reactor, and we've talked about that previously before. This goes inside a solar neutron activator, and it turns nuclear waste into this polonium. The polonium then gets put into a pressurized reaction chamber. Water gets pumped into it, as well as the polonium, and then you put in some of this fluorite dust. Fluoride dust gets thrown in here. It will make a little bit of spent nuclear waste, which then needs to be pumped out back into nuclear waste barrels. And it also gives us our polonium pellets. Now, remember, don't ever break these. You always want to pump them far, far away. If so, you'll let nuclear radiation into the atmosphere and it will hurt you pretty, pretty bad. But there you go. That's how you get your polonium pellets. Next, you are going to actually need your components to make the fusion reactor itself. Firstly, that is going to be the fusion reactor frames. This is going to require four of the atomic alloys, four polonium pellets, and one steel casing. And you're going to get four of these when you craft this. Then from that, you are going to need the controller. This block looks pretty similar, but it's actually on top. It's a little bit different. This is the fusion reactor controller. For that, you're going to need five of these fusion reactor frames, one basic control chemical tank, basic control chemical tank, one basic chemical tank, one glass pane, and two ultimate control circuits. Circuits, and you only get one of these and you only need one of these per fusion reactor following that you're going to have your fusion reactor ports for that you're going to need four of your fusion reactor frames and one ultimate control circuit but you get two of these per craft Next up, something you is which is a little bit optional, and that is the fusion reactor logic adapter. This is going to require one fusion reactor frame and four redstone dust. This is if you want to have your fusion reactor be controlled or monitored using a little bit of redstone, but we're not going to be demonstrating how that works today. Next, if you want to actually look inside your fusion reactor, you are going to need some reactor glass. This is optional, but can be used just to basically peer inside, uh, although the outside of it must be your reactor frames. You can't use the whole thing out of glass. But for that, you're going to need one glass block, four lead ingots, and four enriched iron, and you get four of these per craft. Now, the very, very last thing is going to be the laser focus matrix. You're going to need one of these, but this is a block that is going to jumpstart your fusion reactor. For that, you're going to need four reactor glass and one block of redstone in the center. And this will actually give you two laser focus matrix. And that is all the components you're actually going to need to make the fusion reactor itself. Now, I have built one ahead of time around here. Here's a small one. It has to be this shape. It must be this shape. God, that laser matrix is loud. Um, and let's demonstrate how you have to actually make this now let's go over how to actually make the fusion reactor first you're going to need to get your your fusion reactor frames and you're going to need to make a five by five plus shape essentially here and you want to fill in the center to give yourself a three by three then you're going to want to do the exact same thing on all the other sides it's very very simple you just make a little bit of a star all the way around on each side and each thing can intersect just a little bit here as it's always going to be the direct edge There you go, and now on the very top here, we're going to do the exact same thing, except in the very, very center here, we are going to need to have our controller. The controller must be in this spot here. It cannot be anywhere else. It has to be in the direct center at the very, very top. And as you can see, we had the red particles and the light is now on. However, it's a little bit boring, this one. We are going to need to have some ports. Now, I'm gonna have my fuel ports in here. These are both gonna be input. One's gonna be for tritium and one's gonna be for deuterium. Next, we're gonna to wanna to have a little bit glass just to make so we can actually see on the inside of this thing make it nice because there is going to be a little bit of a man animation inside of here and let's just do this on all the sides for a little bit of fun Now the last thing we're going to need is the laser focus matrix. Now I'm going to be talking about the laser fo focus matrix a little bit more later, but essentially that's how you jumpstart this thing. Now I've forgot one more port. Let's have one more port on this thing and that is going to be for our output. And for this, we're going to need a configurator and we're going to have to shift right click on it and change it to output. And that is where our power is going to come out of. 
Now you can add more ports to this if you want, as this can be cooled later on, so you may want to have a port in for water and a port out for steam, but we'll be talking about more about that later. Now inside of it you'll see different things, you'll have the fusion reactor, it is formed, you do have to place something in here but we'll get to that. Then you've got your heat, let's turn this off just so we can see. Then you've got your heat and here's your plasma, your case, so the plasma is how much the heat is on the inside, how much plasma is being created. This is the heat of your case, we're going to change this back to Fe. Forge energy. It looks like it's everything's going to be in Kelvin for heat though. Then up here you've got your power and down here is going to be for coolant but we'll get to coolant later on. You've then got your fuel which is the injection rate. This means how many millibuckets per tick you're going to put into your fusion reactor and I'll show you what these different fuel things are going to be. In the middle is going to be basically DT fuel, this one's going to be deuterium and this one's going to be tritium. Then lastly are your statistics, we're obviously doing an injection rate of 2, that is the minimum it can be. Your ignition temperature has to be a minimum of 100 mk, which is uh, what, 1 million thousand, or maybe a billion energy, I, I, I don't really know. Sometimes it's a bit confusing, but it's got to be 100 mk. Your max plasma temp is 300 mk, and your max kicking temp is 200 mk, and your passive generation is 400,000 forge energy per tick, which is pretty good. Then you've got your water coolant, that's the same within the injection of minimum of two, uh, and everything is the same for the ignition temperature because it's always to do with just starting it. Your max plasma temp is 150 and your max case in temp is 50. This is, I believe, because we're cooling it, you've brought these levels down. Uh, this will also passively generate 100 KFE extra on top of the 400, I believe, and then it will also generate steam as we, you have to use water cooled, so then you get a little bit of steam out of this as well. And that's basically the inside of the fusion reactor. But now let's actually go over the fuel required for this. And as I said, this is going to require you to have tritium, deuterium, and DT fuel. Now you have to make all three for this to work. So first off, let's start with deuterium as that's the easiest to create. So around the back of here, I have two lines. On the left here, I have your deuterium and on the right here, I have your tritium. And in the center, I am actually making DT fuel inside this chemical infuser. But as I say, we're gonna go down the deuterium line first. So if we go back here, uh, we have an electrolipid separator. This is going to separate heavy water to make deuterium and oxygen. Very, very simple stuff. Now we spoke about how to get heavy water before in a previous tutorial. Now this, all it is, is a mechanism pump. It has to be a mechanism pump and regular water sources, but inside of your pump, you will have these filter upgrades. One filter upgrade per pump, and then you will pump out the heavy water, as you can see here. And this is just constantly making it. You can't really see any process happening. If I set this to um, idle here, this will fill up, and then I think it will stop. Yeah, and you'll start seeing the heavy water start being pumped in. Now if I turn this back on, you can see that it drained it all pretty quickly. That's because I have the upgrades in here and I don't actually have this pumping enough into here to keep up with it. But if I hold shift here, you can see that the deuterium pipeline is pumping up. We have got an incredible amount of deuterium inside of here. And that is it for deuterium. It's very, very, very simple. Now here I've got eight, I believe, of these fully upgraded going into one of these and this should supply you with enough deuterium to go into your fusion reactor and it shouldn't really run out. Next we've got is our tritium. Now tritium is a little bit different. Here you can see that I have some tanks. Now these tanks are going to be storing your tritium. Tritium is also a gas, same as deuterium. Now the reason we are storing these is because in order to create this, you are going to need to use the solar neutron activator, similar to how we did over there while making the polonium pellets. Now, because this is solar activated, that means it only works during the day. Meaning that if you are making maybe excess to fill up your fusion reactor in the day, and then it turns nighttime, you are no longer making any more. And if the fusion reactor runs out of tritium, then it will turn off. This is why you want to store any excess in your pot in some of these tanks throughout the day, so you can actually keep running it at night. We are here using ultimate pressurized tubes, so as you can see, uh, we have a lot left over just in the tube itself but obviously once the tube backs up the gas tanks will start backing up as well 
Now, to make the tritium itself, obviously you need the solar neutron activator and you need to pump in lithium. Now, we have talked about lithium when we were using the fission reactor. But just to go over it quickly again, we first have to have the rotary condensator, which is turning the liquid lithium into regular lithium. Now, I don't have this upgraded. Oh, I do have this upgraded. Um, but it, as you can see, even though it's going at that many per tick, we are the bottleneck here is actually the solon neutron thing but you can't actually upgrade this as you can see there's no upgrades here on the solar neutron activator so you may want to have a couple of these running if you have a setup like i have here so going on here i have got two of these thermal evaporation blocks we have looked at these before um, this is how you get the lithium from your for your fission reactor and inside of the here we are obviously pumping in brine we have got these to an advanced state with our solar panels on the top but obviously to get this a little bit more hot you can do this in the desert or put some your your resistive heaters on here to heat these up even further to create more lithium than required but as you can see lithium is still going up in fact we are backed up on lithium here at the moment which is absolutely insane so we probably are backing up in here now we have backed up fully in one and the other one is not yet backed up which is a little bit strange i'm really surprised about that actually but then to actually get the lithium you need brine now brine is always going to be the bottleneck this is why we have three of these thermal evaporation chambers going into one of these lithium evapor evaporation chambers now brine is made from just pumping water in and making brine very very simple three to one that's how i like to do it uh well really we're having six to two which is the same and then all the lithium is going into this solar neutron majigger through the rotary concentrator so that's basically how that is. It's very, very simple. We've talked about these before, so we're not going to go into too much detail. Now, the last thing we have here is the chemical infuser. This is where we take our tritium and your deuterium and you make it together to make DT fuel. Now, the ways to actually power your fusion reactor. You can either do what I'm going to do here, which is pumping in both tritium and deuterium in together. That way you have a little bit more control about how much power is being put into this. Because inside the fusion reactor itself, you on, on this stage here, you can see that it's actually making the DT fuel itself inside of here. However, you can pump DT, uh, DT fuel straight in, but it will end up using a lot more of the fuel and you'll need a heck of a lot more DT fuel than you really think otherwise it will run out very quickly it's a lot safer to do two separately however you do still have to make dt fuel right away because you have to have dt fuel in order to kick start and jump start the fusion reactor and now you jump start the fusion reactor by making one of these the hull rom which is i think how you say it now the whole rom is made inside the metallurgic infuser the metallurgic infuser must be filled with carbon meaning you have to put coal inside of it and then you have to get gold dust you're going to need four gold dust in total or to manage to make this you can see how nothing's working and then i put in the fourth and it starts crafting this is going to give you a whole rom the whole rom is essentially some sort of container which is single use and when you first get it it's going to be empty as you can see here now with your whole rom you have to go in to over here put your whole rom inside of here and it will fill up with dt fuel now we are ready for the reaction we can kick start our fusion reactor now so first off let's put a little bit of fuel in here and we'll see up here now that inside of the fuel we have got our deuterium and tritium a thousand buckets of each now nothing's happening yet because we haven't actually started this in order to actually jump start your fusion reactor you are going to need a laser matrix now we're going to cover the laser matrix in more detail in a separate tutorial but you are going to need these fully um nothing as big as this you don't have to have something as big as this in order to jump start this but let's go over how you craft some of these things for this we are going to be making some laser amplifiers and some lasers now the laser amplifiers they're going to require seven of these steel ingots one diamond and a basic energy cube and this will actually get you to oh and a diamond sorry and you're going this is going to make you one laser amplifier now you're going to need a minimum of one laser amplifier in order to do this then you're also going to need some lasers. The lasers are going to require two energy tablets, three reinforced alloys, one steel casing, and again, another diamond. And you want to get one of these per craft. But you're going to need maybe at least four, I would say, for this. 
and I'll show you why now. First, we have a laser amplifier here. This is essentially where your join is for all other lasers. Now, I have this set to be activated on redstone, which means that it's not actually sending any power passively, unlike the other ones. You can't really see here, but there's a little bit of a laser here. Basically, all these other amplifiers are firing into the next, into the next, into the next, into the next, and they're all being stored inside of here. Now, we took, you need to get all the way up to 2GF in order to jumpstart our fusion reactor. Now, we get power inside of these amplifiers by using using lasers now these lasers I'm just using creative energy cubes to power each one individually but obviously you don't need that you can run a pipe going all the way around and that will power all of the lasers now we have to wait until this gets to fully 2.2 uh, GFE in total now if you didn't have this set to redstone it would start pumping the energy straight into the fusion reactor but it wouldn't actually turn it on you'd see inside of here I, I tried it and demonstrated a little bit earlier we do get a little bit of heat and plasma inside of here it actually goes up quite high and this will fill up all the way to 400 mfe now you can see no more power is actually being generated because that's because the power is not being fed into it but the fusion reactor isn't actually on what's happening is just using it as a bit of a pass through it's collecting the energy and and then here I've got it sent going forward. Now I've got this port here, this port here, you just take a configurator and you right click on it and it changes it from input to output. You can do that on any of the other ports. If it's green, it's input. If it's red, it's output. So here obviously we have our input ports. But now what we need to do is take our whole ROM and put it inside of our fusion reactor. So let's put it inside of here and now we are ready to actually jump start our fusion reactor. The moment this gets up to 2GF, which isn't gonna to be too long, uh, uh, we are going to fire a tractor beam or a laser beam straight into our laser matrix. The laser must be fired into the laser matrix in order for this to work, which is why it's 100% required. So I will be back when this is full and ready to get thrown into our laser matrix. So here we are, we are fully ready to ignite this now. Inside here we have got 2GF, inside here we have our holorom, it's filled with DT fuel, so let's actually start this thing. We're going to hit a button, it's going to fire out that laser matrix, and bosh, now the fusion reactor has started. And we know that because we've got this massive animation here. Now inside, we can see our heat is starting to get up really, really quickly. Inside of here, we actually have power, but the power is actually going to be sent away as I'm putting this all into this induction matrix here you can see how we've already gained a quite a bit of power here now the induction matrix this is something we've talked about before it's basically a massive power storage bank this isn't the largest one but it's still a pretty pretty big one now inside of here you can see that we have got our dt fuel and our tritium going in it is there's actually still filling up we are making more than we are using as you can see here with this setup now we can get more power out of this. You can see that the heat is actually going down a bit because that is from our initial injection of power and energy. That's what created all that heat. But if we want to, we can create even more. So injection rate of two millibuckets per second, let's change this up to four, let's double it. Now something to note about the injection rate, you have to have it on an even number, you can't do three, it has to be an even number. So for, in our case, we're gonna do four, and then inside of here, we can see that our heat should go up a little bit. Yes, the heat is going up, and the power generation is also going up now. The only way we can actually increase our power um, movement here is if we put some more of these uh, induction ports things over here, that's all about transfer. But we talk about induction in a different tutorial. As you can see, we've got a lot more power. Now, we can actually up this even further. Let's go to 10 and see what happens here. T injection rate of 10, we have now got a heck of a lot more fuel. The heat is off the charts now. And our statistics here, we can see that it says all the same, uh, but our max temp here is 1.5 gk that's our max temp now because this is air cooled at the moment but if we had a bit of water here it would obviously be even even cooler but we are making passive energy of 2 mf per tick which is a heck of a lot of power now if we look down here we are actually still gaining deuterium more and tritium more than we are actually using which is why this is such an infinitely good setup so how about we go even further and go something really big to 50 and have a look at the stats now. We are now making 7.5 GF of GK of plasma, making 10 FE per tick, which is absolutely insane. The heat here is off the charts. The case is off the charts. The power is actually gaining in power. If we go back to heat here, 
we can see that it can still go all the way up to 400 MFE, but we're actually gaining inside of here, but still not too much. Inside of here, we are, we've got so much power. The only way we can probably really get this any more now is if we maybe had a couple of more outports, you know, and uh, pumped it in there from different separations. This is also filling up again. For this laser matrix, now that this is on, you don't actually need this laser matrix anymore unless that it turned off. You can see that's going rapid now. If you turned this off or it ran out of juice or anything that stopped working, you would then need the laser matrix again. So you, you can actually turn this all off. And for now, I'm gonna get rid of it because it's very, very loud. So how about we now give it the full beans? Let's go all the way up to the highest, which I don't think is actually 100, it's actually 98. As you can see, you can only put two digits there, and we are at 98 of this power now. Heat is going up, we're generating the most amount. We actually can't get enough power out of this now, it's generating it so quickly. This is 99 millibuckets per tick. Are we still gaining? We are still gaining deuterium, and we are still gaining our tritium. This is why you want this setup because when you have this setup on max fusion reactor, this will never run out. Your only back fall will be how much of this tritium you can store. So you still want to keep an eye on that. Make sure you have a couple of these solar arrays going in order to actually keep things going. But we have got so much power here. We've actually maxed it out. The case heating is still going up. The plasma heating is still going up and it's absolutely insane. We are now making 19.6 MFE per tick, which is insane. It's actually more than we can put in here per tick. But now let's talk about one more thing. We can obviously cool this. We can do water cooling, because as you can see, the temperature is really hot here, but we can put this down a bit. It would make a little bit less power uh, passive pass generation, but we can get a lot of steam out of this. And we all know what can be had done with steam. So how about we put a little bit of water in here? I'm gonna use our creative water tanks here just to suck everything out here. It's gonna to have to set this to pull so it all fills it nicely up here. And let's dump some water into here and see what happens. Now, I believe that should work just as is. If I go to heat, we have got water inside of here now. Nearly, it doesn't, I don't know what the maximum amount is. It doesn't say what it could be out of, but inside we have got some stuff and the steam, we already have 50, 60 million steam. That is absolutely insane. And I don't know what the maximum is, but we are still generating a heck and load of power. Statistics in here, we should still be creating the 4.9 MFE. I don't know if that's actually added onto this. That would be very, very handy if it is, but I really, really don't know. But since we have all this steam now, how about we make ourselves a steam generator or steam turbine to see how much more extra power we can get passively. So here we go. I have made ourselves a steam turbine. It's not the biggest one, but it's still pretty good and will be a little bit effective. Let's just have a look here, see how much it actually made while I was in here. We have got over 2 billion steam i think that is <laughs> which is absolutely insane so what we want to do is we want to take our steam here by clicking on that we've got our steam the steam can come in just like this down to the bottom here let's have something like this it's not going to be the prettiest thing but there we go we are now full of steam now from this steam we want to now get our water out of it which is where we're going to need our mechanical pipes just like this and we need to change this to be a uh, pull out pull I believe water should be coming out of here now. Never mind, it's just full of energy. Jesus Christ, look at that. This can actually make 7.77 GFE just in itself and it's already doing so much power. All right, how about we just get our energy out of here now, which we're gonna need some universal cable here. And we'll just do something like this. We're just gonna go straight along into our induction matrix like this. And there we go, even more power is gonna be transferred into here now and all the power is being sucked out. I have figured out the reason why water wasn't coming out. I forgot to put my saturation condensants inside of here like an absolute numpty, but never mind. We now have water coming out of here. And if you want to know more about steam turbines, then I highly recommend clicking the video that's up in the cards. And there we go. Now we've got a full cycle. This is going to keep creating so much extra passive power for us. The steam is going all the way up. The water is going back into here. We have, have a full amount of injection of 98. We are making so much power. We are making 4.9 MFE here. And then over here, we are making an extra 5.11. So and as, you can, as you can see, we've got so much steam. We could probably make a couple of these steam turbines. Since we still have, let's see, if we go into heat here, 
we're actually making we're actually using almost all the steam but probably what's happening is yes our uh, our pressurized tubes are just filling up exponentially quick as our water filling up now the water is actually not filling up which is very very surprising well, the guys, that is everything that I can show you today when it comes to the fusion reactor. If you stick with the setup I showed you today, you will never ever run out of your fuel ever again and you'll have constant energy. Even if you choose to go make all these steam turbines and have it all water cooled, or if you have it air cooled, it's completely up to you. But if this video helps you out in any way, shape or form, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future. As next time we need to discover some of the advanced tools that we can now get in the game as well as let's cover that laser matrix just a little bit more but until next time guys take care